Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. I hope you're ready because we will start right now. And in this first lesson, I thought it would be, or it might be useful to start with the pronunciation of the vowels. Okay, and after that, of course, consonant will come, but it will be in the, in the next lesson. Okay, so let's see now for the, the vowels, how it goes. So the first one is A. Okay, A. So not really difficult to pronounce for most of you. Second one is a, uh, repeat, a, uh, okay. Remember that on this vowel we can put some accents, okay, and then it will affect the, the way you will pronounce the a, uh, okay, but if it's like that without any accent and you, you need to spell it or to, uh, to pronounce the letter, it's a, uh, okay, a. Uh. Next one is e, e. Then O, okay, so don't be afraid to put your mouth really round. O, O, okay, so it's quite deep. O, okay, then U, U. So this U can be tricky. So uh, from my experience of teaching, I've been noticing that, uh, well, in most of the cases, uh, for American people, it can be quite tricky at the beginning. So you really need to insist on that. It's ooh, ooh, okay? Spanish-speaking persons can have some difficulties as well for that. Ooh, okay? So don't be afraid to pronounce. So really, it's not ooh, because in most of the cases, that's the, the mistake people tend to make. They pronounce it like ooh, okay? Now, in that case, it's really ooh. E, so really narrow sound. E, okay, so don't be afraid to insist on that. And the last one is, uh, well, it's Y. So if you need to spell it, then you say Y. Okay, when you pronounce it, it's like E. E, okay, but the name of the letter is Y. Okay, so if we check them again one more time, this one is A, then comes A. E, O, U, remember, U, and the last one, Y for the name, okay, but then the pronunciation is E, alright? And in this uh, lesson, we'll discover the pronunciation of the consonant, so les consonnes. Are you ready? So let's start now. Okay, so les consonnes, B. B. Okay, so this one shouldn't be that difficult to produce. B. B. Then comes C. Okay. C. D. D. F. F. G. G. Okay, so if we want to repeat them one more time. B, C, D, F, G. Okay? Let's see the others. H, H, J, J, K, K, L, L, M, M. Okay? One more time. H, J, K, L, M. Okay? And then, of course, it continues. N, N. P, P, Q, Q, R, R. So it's quite important because people tend to think that French people are making this eh, like that really deep and really, uh, well, it, it will 
hurt your uh, throat if you, you try to insist too much on that. And if you listen to me, well, basically, it's not that strong. Air, air. Okay, so it's quite soft. Air, air. The next one is S, S. Okay, so let's see them one more time. N, P, Q, R, S. And the last consonant are T, T, V, V, W, W. Okay, so we've got this double, 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 and then V, W, okay. X, X, and the last one, Z, Z. Okay, so remember to pronounce this D at the end. Z, Z. Okay, so let's see them one more time. T, V, W, X, Z. Let's cover les accents, so the accents. And normally when we talk about the accents, we tend to insist on the accents which are on the top of the letter E. Uh, Okay, because they will change the, the pronunciation of the, the letter. When you put the accents on the top of O, E, or A, well, nowadays, we don't really pronounce the, 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 the differences. Uh, but then, A uh, is still affected by that. So, you should really, really first remember the name of the accent. Okay, and it's normally like that. Okay, and then the sound that you will have to pronounce uh, or to produce when you see it. On the top of the uh, okay because so without any accent this letter if you remember we saw that previously is pronounced uh uh okay but then when you put this this one so this one is called accent aigu okay it goes like that in that direction okay and you will pronounce the the, the letter like a okay listen to the difference without the accent uh with the accent a okay without a uh, and with a all right second accent that we can work on it's a little bit the same but it goes in the other direction so if you look it goes like that okay and then it's called accent grave accent grave okay and the sound that you will have to produce is a so it's really open. I mean, the sound is really open, and normally your mouth should be opened a little bit more than with the accent aigu as well. Okay, so it goes like a. Eh. All right, don't don't be afraid to insist a little bit on the pronunciation. Okay, uh, first, and then you can make it uh, shorter after, of course. A, eh. a. Eh. All right. So let's compare them. The first one is a, eh. and then the second one is. Eh. All right. The good news is that the next one, so accent circonflexe, is pronounced like accent grave. Okay. So it's the same pronunciation here. Okay. And it's the open one. Okay. Eh. Right. Okay. Eh. All right. So you can see that it's just like a little hat that you get to put on the top of okay so let's see one more time the differences this one a okay and then these two accents like here a open a okay the last one tréma well basically it's quite rare and the tricky thing is that in some cases you will have to you will have to pronounce it like a okay like for instance noel okay but then in some cases as well it can be pronounced like a okay so my advice would be try to remember the word and they are really really rare so don't don't be don't be afraid about that 
okay so but that let's focus on the three main accents here okay the first one accent aigu remember a accent grave a and the last one accent circonflex a so we'll focus on the les caractères spéciaux for the special characters that maybe you will have to use if you want to well spell your name or then if you want to uh, give a web address or something like that so because normally they can be quite useful and at the at the really beginning so it, it's quite useful to to uh, spend a little time on them okay so let's start now uh, les caractères spéciaux the first one okay if you look at it it's here okay and we called it Tire. Okay. Tire. All right. Let's see the second one. Same thing, but it's, you know, a low one. So we call it tire ba. Tire ba. Okay. So remember the first one located in the middle is tire. And the other one here is tire ba. Okay. Let's see the, the other one. So officially... We called it arrobas, arrobas, okay? But then, well, let's be honest, we can hear many French people or French-speaking people using this at, okay? Uh, but then the French, well, of course, at, all right? Uh, but officially, it should be arrobas, okay? So don't be surprised if someone is using that or then uh, you can use it as well because that's the way it should be. It should be used, so arrobas, okay? Um, here? the dot okay because it's not always easy to to spot here uh we we call it point okay point all right so one more time tire tire bas arrobas point okay and then it continues a little bit so if you want to indicate that you've got well double a double letter, okay? Um you can say so in that case it's P P, okay? So you say de, okay, de it's two in French. De, okay? P. De P. Okay, if it would be another letter, then you would say de and then the name of the, the letter, of course. Then this one here is called apostrophe. Okay, apostrophe, apostrophe, okay, and the last one for this lesson, here you can see that in some cases, so we'll see that a bit later, I mean the reason why, but still you can have this little thing beneath the C, okay, and that's what we call CD, CD, okay. CD, yeah, 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 CD, okay? And we'll discover a quite important thing, uh, because uh, it's a verb, and uh, it's the verb être, okay? Être means to be, okay? So as in many, many languages, the to be is quite useful, uh, just for a um, well, simple reason, you tend to use it quite often, and then we can use it to construct some composed tenses that we'll see a bit later, okay? So, let's see how it goes at the present form. Le verbe être, first, is je suis. Je suis, okay? Je, it's the pronoun personnel, so it's I, okay? Suis, I am, okay? Je suis, all right? And second person, tu es, okay? So remember, être is really tricky, especially when it comes to pronunciations, okay? So first one, suis, as you've been noticing, you don't pronounce the final S, okay? And for tu, then you've got this combination of letters, okay? But then, basically, the sound you will pronounce or you will produce is a, okay? Tu es, all right? Je suis, tu es. Okay, so let's see the next one. So you get this il, okay, so it's a capital letter, but then it's still it's i and then l, okay, il. So it's he, okay, masculine form, and then l, she, 
so feminine form okay and this is the verb so il è well then l a so you can notice that even if we write them differently this a like that and a like that we, pr we pronounce them the the same way and that's usually the difficult thing you know with a french language uh what you write and what you pronounce can be quite different okay so remember je suis tu es il est elle est okay so let's see how the next one comes here it's nu nu okay ah! sorry about that oops <laughs> nu sun okay nu sun okay so you don't pronounce the final s here it doesn't exist sun nu sun okay then <laughs> the next one is coming vous êtes same thing here notice that final s is not pronounced et et okay and then in french we tend to have this liaison so liaison it's like a link okay that we can make between the words so in that case vous is ending with s and then you tend to make a little link between them so vous êtes Zzz. it goes like that vous êtes okay vous êtes vous êtes all right so let's see one more time je suis tu es il est elle est nous sommes vous êtes okay and let's see the last one il okay so you can notice that even if you've got this s at the end and then here you don't have anything well you pronounce them the same way okay il singular form il plural form okay il son final t not pronounced il son elle son okay il son elle son so let's see it's Again, je suis, tu es, il est, elle est, nous sommes, vous êtes, ils sont, elles sont. All right. One more thing to notice because it's quite important. This vous form, okay, can be used for the plural, of course, and then it's the polite form that we use uh, if you meet someone for the first time. Uh, let's say it's uh, it's someone that you are uh, connected to uh, professionally or uh, it's well someone important so then well in that case or then you don't know this person uh, you should use definitely this vous okay uh, for the first time it's the polite form after that you can decide whether you want to use this tu form okay which is normally quite common in french but then first remember that vous is better okay let's see a few examples now Okay, first, I've been no, writing this uh, this question, so, quelle est votre nationalité? Okay, so, here to show you that it's here. Quelle means what, a is, votre, your, so it's uh, according to, to this vous, okay, so the polite form of your, and then nationalité, nationality, okay, so let's repeat the question. Quelle est votre nationalité? Alright. And in French, we tend to raise the voice at the end when we've got this little point d'interrogation. If it's a question, don't be afraid to go like Yoop! and raise a little bit at the end. Okay? So, quelle est votre nationalité? Okay? Quelle est votre nationalité? So if you want to present or to say uh, where you're from, okay? So we're using this être for that, you know? Je suis, okay? So you get here, it's already. And then you put this français, français, okay? It's French. Je suis français. Je suis français, okay? Then another example. Quel est... Votre 
nom de famille. Famille, family, nom, name. So, nom de famille, family name, last name if you want. Okay. Quel, it's still what. Okay. In that case, it's written like that. So, we will see that in a coming lesson, but just to inform you, that's the masculine form, just because nom is masculine. And here, you've got the feminine form because nationalité is feminine. Okay. But then we pronounce them the same way. So, quel est, what is, votre, your, nom de famille, so family name or last name. Okay, it's a question. Quel est votre nom de famille? Okay, so it's not the opera or uh, something that you want to sing. Okay, so just raise a little bit your voice at the, at the end of the, the question. Okay, so the answer, c'est le François. So it's interesting because you can see that we've got this C here and it doesn't show in the, 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 the examples that we saw previously or for the, the, the conjugation just because it's S, well, basically you can, you could translate it like it is or this is or yeah, it is, okay? C'est le François, okay? And the last one, quel est sa profession, okay? Quel est sa profession? What is? So, être, hein? same. Sa, so it's her profession, profession, okay? Elle est directrice. Elle est directrice. Okay, so she's a director, and then it's the feminine form here. So the last lesson was uh, introduction of uh, le verbe être, okay? And I thought it, it would be more logical to uh, continue with uh, le verbe avoir. So avoir means to have, okay? And for the same reason as uh, to be, okay? It's, uh, it's really useful and really used. So you should definitely know this uh, verb avoir by heart if you want to master uh, French language, okay? So let's see that, the verb avoir, okay? And so we'll see the different uh, forms. So the first one is j'ai. Okay? J'ai. All right? So if you remember correctly, we had this je, personal pronoun. And then when it comes near another vowel, like a, for instance, then it tends to disappear. Okay? So just to avoid pronouncing this Je, because we think that in French it doesn't sound, doesn't sound that beautiful. So we tend to take this E uh away, okay? So that you get this sound, J, J, okay? So J apostrophe A, I. Remember when you combine this A, I, you get the E sound, okay? Second one. T, A, okay? As usual in French, final S is not pronounced. Tu, A. Tu, A. Okay, first one. J'ai, tu, A. Then comes il. So, masculine form, he. Okay, il, he. Elle, she. Okay, and then A. So, as you can notice, second form, a, s, is pronounced a, and this is a. Same pronunciation in both cases, okay? Then, nous avons, final s, not pronounced, avons, okay? And then, we tend to make this little link, as I said previously in the lesson, uh, E uh, for uh, être, you make this link between the two, so nous avons, nous avons, okay, nous avons, nous avons, that's it, next one, same thing, the little liaison, little link between the two, okay, vous avez, vous avez, all right, and the last one, so same thing if you can see, you get this final S and final S 
here, okay? And then you will have to make the little link between the two. Ils ont. Ils ont. Ils ont. Okay? And then feminine form. Elles ont. Elles ont. Alright? Let's see the whole thing one more time. J'ai. Tu as. Il a. Elle a. Nous avons. Vous avez. Ils ont. Elles ont. Okay? So let's see now. Just to make it more clear. Remember, so I in French is je. You, it's tu. He, il. She, elle. We, nous. You, so as in English, first use for the plural, a group of person, okay? And then second use, the polite form for you, one person, okay? Vous, il, elle. One last time. Je, tu, il, elle, nous, vous, il, elle. Discover le verbe aller. So the verb aller, aller means to go. So it's really useful because, well, we tend to use it like that. So for the main to go reason uh, quite often. And we use it as also like in many languages uh, for what we call the future proche. So the near future. I am going to. And then you put a verb at the infinitive. Uh, so it is it is quite, quite used, especially in the oral language. We tend to maybe use it a little bit more than the, the real future. Okay? So let's see how you conjugate this aller verb. The first form is je vais. Okay? So remember, final S not pronounced here. Je vais. Okay? When you combine this A-E, you get the sound really open, okay? Je vais. D'accord? Tu vas. Final S doesn't exist. Tu vas. Tu vas. Okay? Then we've got this il. So remember, il. Uh, it's for the, the, the masculine form. So he, okay? And then elle, she, okay? And then you get the va form. Basically, you pronounce it like for the two because you don't pronounce the final S, okay? Il va, elle va, okay? Je vais, tu vas, il va, elle va. Then, nous, so we, plural form, nous allons, okay? And if you, so final S not pronounced, and then if you are purist, and I'm sure you are, you want to make this beautiful and little liaison, so this little link between the words, so it does mean that you will have to pronounce this uh, sound, okay, listen to me, nous allons, nous allons, okay, nous allons, that's it, same thing here, we'll have this little link between the two, vous allez, Vous allez. And the last one. So remember, here you get this S just to make the difference between the singular and the plural. Because when you put the plural form normally, you tend to add S at the end of the words. Okay, like here. But then you don't pronounce it. So, ils vont. Final day, not pronounced. Ils vont. And then feminine form. Elles vont. All right, let's see everything again. Je vais, tu vas, il va, elle va, nous allons, vous allez, ils vont, elles vont. All right, and then just a few examples. Just to show you how uh, useful this uh, aller verb can be, because we tend to use this uh, aller verb when you want to ask uh, if someone is uh, doing fine, okay? Uh, so the first 
question. How do you do in French is comment, so how, comment, allez-vous? And then, same thing here, little link between the two. Comment allez-vous? Comment allez-vous? Alright, so I've been putting this vous form here for the first example, just to show you that if you meet someone for the first time, then it's, well, it's better to use this vous. So here, the vous form, so because it's the polite form. Okay, comment allez-vous? Okay, it's a question, so raise a little bit your voice at the end. Like, comment allez-vous? Okay, you see? Comment allez-vous? Alright, so answer when you want to say, I'm doing fine, okay? Je vais bien, and then you say, merci, thank you. Je vais bien, merci. So now, if you know the person, okay, you get two options. I mean, normally that's the most used one. The first one would be, comment vas-tu? Okay, so in that case, you just switch and you change this, you, so polite form, and you change it with this tu form, comment vas-tu, okay? Well, answer can be the same, you know, je vais bien, merci, okay? And the other one, comment ça va, okay? It, it, it would be like impersonal form, okay? So you're not really addressing uh, directly to the person. Uh, how is it going could be translated, uh, could be translated like that in, in, in English, okay? Comment ça va, okay? You raise a little bit at the end. Comment ça va? And then, same thing, you can answer with Ça va, merci. Okay, so let's read them. Comment allez-vous? Je vais bien, merci. Comment vas-tu? Je vais bien, merci. Comment ça va? Ça va, merci. We will discover le verbe s'appeler. So, uh, previously we've been seeing uh, three verbs. So the first one was... Uh, être, to be, yeah, and then after that it was avoir, to have, and then in the last, uh, last or previous lesson, it was uh, aller, to go, and I thought it would be useful to introduce this s'appeler verb, because normally that's the, the, the verb you tend to uh, use uh, at the right beginning when you want to introduce yourself, because if you say my name is, uh, well, in French we will use this s'appeler verb okay it is always tricky and a big challenge for a french teacher uh, to introduce this supply verb at the real beginning because um, it belongs to this group of verbs that we call uh, 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 verb pronomino so you'll see why because if you compare it to the others something is coming there okay so if you remember when we conjugate uh, a verb first we put the pronoun personnel so the personal pronoun here so je is like uh, i okay and then so basically the verb appeler appeler means to call okay so without this s okay appeler is to call okay and then when you had this s here and then if you transform it like in this form i call and this is a pronoun it's like me so it's like i call myself i call me so it's just the way we've got in french to introduce ourselves okay so it's je m'appelle okay je m'appelle all right second form tu t'appelles okay remember final s not pronounced tu T'appelle. Okay. Then, il s'appelle. Il s'appelle. Elle s'appelle. Elle s'appelle. And then the funny thing for nous or vous, you'll see that, well, basically we repeat it or repeat it's just a pronoun so we call ourselves if you want okay but then we put the pronouns before the, the, the verb okay nous nous appelons and then little link would be perfect so let's pronounce the whole thing again nous nous appelons nous nous appelons okay final s doesn't exist nous nous appelons Okay, then 
Vous vous appelez. Vous vous appelez. Okay, so you can hear. We put the little link again here. Vous vous appelez. All right. And the last one. Il s'appelle. Elle s'appelle. Okay, so one thing that you should remember and probably you did here. Okay, so here for nous and vous. So we've got only one L like here in the infinitive form. So that's the reason why I've been pronouncing appelons. Okay, and then appeler. All right. But for je, so if you can spot it here, look, we've got double L here, double L, double L, and then for the plural form, double L. So when you get this a vowel, and then you get a double consonant, and well, they are the same, then it does change the pronunciation of a. Uh, you tend to pronounce it like a, eh, a, eh, really open. That's the reason why you pronounce it Appel, appel, okay? Appel, 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 and appel. All right? So, as I said, that's the tricky thing with French language. I mean, you write them like here, without S, here, with S, and here, with E and T, and T. You pronounce them the same way. Je m'appelle, tu t'appelles, il, elle s'appelle, il, elle s'appelle, okay? All right. And now, a few examples. Comment vous vous appelez? Okay. So, comment vous vous appelez? So, when you want to know the, the, the name of someone, you know. Comment vous vous appelez? Answer. Je m'appelle Vincent. Et vous? Okay. So, I am Vincent. I call myself Vincent, if you want. Vincent. Et vous? And you, okay, so you want to know the name of the, the person who is asking this question, okay? Uh, the other possibility that you would have, you know, so first you've been starting with comment and then vous vous appelez, okay? So that's the, well, a common way of asking the, the, the question, all right? Other possibility would be to start with vous vous appelez, okay? So technically you just take the verb and then you put this Comment, how, at the end. Okay, it would be possible as well. Okay, remember to raise your voice. Vous vous appelez comment? All right. And the last one is the more correct form. Okay, so first you should start with comment, how. And then, as in many languages, you should, well, change a little bit the order of the structure of the sentence. Okay, vous appelez Vous, okay, that's the real correct way to ask the name of someone, you know. Comment vous appelez-vous? All right, and you, then you raise your voice. Comment vous appelez-vous? All right, so let's repeat them. Comment vous vous appelez? Vous vous appelez comment? Comment vous appelez-vous? will discover in this lesson pour se présenter. So if you want to present yourself, okay? So it will be a really short lesson, but still quite useful because, well, technically you will have to present yourself at one point when you speak with French people or French-speaking people. Okay, so let's discover how it goes. The first one, well, tend to use this appeler verb, okay? Je... M'appelle Vincent Lefrançois. Okay? Je m'appelle Vincent Lefrançois. So you use this s'appeler verb. So uh, I did introduce this verb in the previous lesson. So it was uh, leçon H. Okay? So if you didn't see this lesson, I uh, definitely invite you uh, to, 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 to watch it. Because uh, I tend to explain the reason why, you know, I've got this, well, there is this je m'appelle form, okay? So, je m'appelle Vincent Lefrançois. So, that's the first possibility you will have. Uh, the other possibility is to use this être, so to be verb, je suis, I am, je suis Vincent Lefrançois. Okay, so the first one, je 
m'appelle. So basically, s'appeler, or je m'appelle. You could translate it directly, but, well, it's not really interesting, but still, you know, I call myself, okay? So that's the verb we tend to use when we introduce ourselves. Je m'appelle Vincent Lefrançois, okay? And then the second one, I am, je suis Vincent Lefrançois. And the last option we will have is mon nom, my name, mon nom est, is Vincent Lefrançois. Okay? First option, je m'appelle Vincent Lefrançois. Second, je suis Vincent Lefrançois. Last one, mon nom est Vincent Lefrançois. Of course, the first one is the most used. Okay? Even if the verb is a bit tricky at the beginning, definitely you should work on it and uh, you should well master this uh, sapli verb because that's the one we will use when we introduce ourselves. Okay, we'll discover les articles définis, so definite articles. Uh, in English, it would be the, okay, but in French, of course, as usual, we've got the difference between the masculine form, the feminine form, and the plural form, okay? And we start with the masculine form, so we've got le, le, okay? And then, in some cases, this vowel, e, uh, if it's close to other vowels, so if there is a word after that starting with a vowel, in some case it, it will have to disappear, okay? So you will get this L apostrophe, so that's the reason I've been writing it here, okay? But then the main form is L, okay? Then LA, feminine form, LA, same for the same reason, you know, you will have this option L apostrophe as well. And then the plural form is le. Okay? So, whereas in English you get only, there is only this the form in French, we will have the difference between the masculine form, le, the feminine form, la, and then the plural form, le. So, of course, according to the word, you will have to choose the correct article. So, we'll take a few examples here. The first one is chien. Chien is a dog. And in French, chien, like that, it's masculine, so le chien. So basically, you just put the article le and then chien, okay? In that case, second case, ordinateur, well, you can see that it starts with the vowel o, okay? And as I said, you know, e and o, they don't get along that well, so you get to take this e away, and then you get this l'ordinateur, l'ordinateur, all right? And Third example, so I took on purpose this hotel, okay, because it starts with H, but remember that in French we don't pronounce H, okay, so basically the first sound of the word is the vowel O, okay, so for the same reason, E needs to disappear, l'hôtel, okay, so we re if we repeat them, le chien, l'ordinateur, and then l'hôtel, okay? Feminine form, la famille, okay? So no problem, so family, la famille, okay? Then we've got argent, money, argent, same for the same reason, so a, a, l'argent, okay, you get to take this all the way, l'argent, and same thing as previously when, what we saw for the, the masculine part, even if you've got this ash, then the first sound you hear is a, okay, so for the same reason you will have to take this a away, and then you get this l'habitation, l'habitation, okay, and then I've been taking, well, basically, the example from here, chien, okay, and then I put s at the end, and it's the mark of the plural, okay? So you put les chiens, the dogs, okay? Les chiens. And then you take famille, family, okay? Just add this final S and you get the plural form. Les familles, okay? Remember, chien, singular form, chien, same pronunciation, but you put this S, okay? Final S, not pronounced. Famille, singular form, famille, plural form, same pronunciation, S, not pronounced. We'll discover les articles indéfinis. So, 
indefinite articles so any um, in english uh, there is only one and it's a uh, or an okay and in french we've got always the difference between the masculine form the feminine form and the plural form as we saw in the previous lesson remember for the uh, definite articles okay it was the same okay and in this lesson so article indefini well it's the same we'll start with the masculine form and the masculine form goes like that so when you put these two letters together it can be quite tricky to pronounce at the beginning of course after that you will master it without any problem and without any doubt but you get to pronounce it like uh. so it's uh what we call the nasal so it goes in your nose okay uh. so if you listen to me you don't hear any n okay so it's just a combination of the two uh. 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 all right okay so that's the masculine form then the feminine article is here and it's easier because if you you have this u n e then you pronounce it un un okay masculine un feminine form un un okay and then the plural form de all right here a s you pronounce it you pronounce it like a e, okay un un de all right let's see few examples now okay here ami means friend okay un ami and then we tend to make this little little link between the two un ami un ami okay soleil sun un soleil un soleil livre book un livre un livre voiture car feminine une voiture une voiture école school feminine form as well une école une école décision une décision une décision don't ask me to translate this décision come on please ami so i've been taking this now look ami here so we've got the masculine form and it's the singular remember if you want to put the plural form then you just add this final s here okay but then technically you pronounce it the same way so singular form ami plural form you add this s but it's ami as well okay in that case you get de so here de okay here and then there is this little liaison remember it's been introduced in a previous lesson you put this little link between the word des amis des amis okay i've been taking wa voiture here voiture a car okay just add this s at the end and then you get the plural form des voitures okay and then i've been taking back this livre same thing you just add s at the end des livres okay let's repeat them one more time un une des un ami un soleil un livre, une voiture, une école, une décision, des amis, des voitures, des livres. Discover together l'article interrogatif. So it's really useful and we'll see that now. So l'article interrogatif, here you get the masculine form and it's quel. Quel means what. Okay, so that's what you'll use when you want to ask a, a question with what, okay? And you get a good example here. So, quel est votre nom de famille? What is votre your? So, the polite form of your. Nom de famille, family name, last name, okay? Quel est votre nom de famille? What is your last name? Second example. Quel est votre prénom? Prénom is first name. What is votre, the polite form for your? Quel est votre prénom? What is your first name? Okay, so you can see now, more in detail, that nom, prénom are masculine words. And that's the reason why, in that case, you get to choose the article here, according to the gender of the word it is connected to. Quel 
masculine form because no is masculine, quel masculine form because prénom is masculine. Okay, let's see now the feminine. And the good news is that, as usual in French, we write the thing differently, but then we can pronounce them the same way. And then the feminine form is written like that, Q U E L L E, but it's pronounced like the masculine form. Quel at the masculine, quel at the feminine. Okay, so it's basically same pronunciation. Okay, and then here we've got two examples. So for the same reason as previously, we had this nom and then prénom. They were masculine words, so you would have you will have to to put this quel form at the masculine. And then here nationalité and adresse. So nationality address are feminine words. So it does mean that you will have to use this article interrogatif quel at the feminine form. Quel est, what is, votre, your, nationalité. What is your nationality? Quelle est votre nationalité? Okay. Quelle est votre adresse? What is your address? Okay. So, let's repeat them. Quel est votre nom de famille? Quel est votre prénom? Quelle est votre nationalité? Quelle est votre adresse? Okay. So, remember one thing for the phonetics, okay, the way to pronounce them. Quel, masculine form here, will be pronounced exactly as the feminine form here. Quel. So, only one sound, okay? And then, the second thing that you've got to remember, of course, you can, well, basically record these articles with the word they are connected to. So it does mean that if the word is at the plural form, then you will have to put the plural form. Uh, the rule in French, if you remember correctly from the previous lessons we've been lessons we've been doing, uh, is to put this final s at the end of the words to put the plural. Okay, so quel here for the masculine singular will become quel here masculine plural. Okay. Quel here, feminine singular, will become quel with the S, feminine plural. And the good news is that you will pronounce them the same way. Alright, so quel, 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 and quel. Okay, remember that in some cases, of course, you will have to make this little liaison, you know, this little link between the words. So if the word or the verb or whatever is coming after is starting with the vowel, of course you will have to put the, this little link. But then if you pronounce it or if you pronounce them just like that, quel, 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 quel. We're going to discover together les jours et les mois. So the days and the month. Okay? Les jours et les mois. So let's see that together. And so we'll start with les jours de la semaine. Okay, semaine is week. Les jours, so you can see that it's the plural form. Huh? The days. Huh? Les jours of the la semaine. Les jours de la semaine, the days of the week. Okay, so we'll start with the first one. And in France... Uh, the week starts with lundi, Monday. Lundi, lundi. Okay, remember, UN is pronounced like un. Lundi, lundi, lundi. Then, mardi, mardi. So, you can hear that you don't pronounce it that strongly, this R. Huh? Mardi, mardi, okay? You don't need to go too deep like mardi, no, no, no. You don't move your tongue so it, does, it doesn't sound like mardi, no. It's really soft. Mardi, 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 okay? The next one is mercredi, mercredi, Wednesday. Mercredi, mercredi, okay? Next one, jeudi. 
jeudi. Remember when you combine this E, U, you get the sound E, jeudi. Jeudi, so I insist a little bit, so make it softer. Jeudi, jeudi. Then, E, N, nasal, and it's en, en. So remember, vendredi, 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 vendredi. Okay? Then, samedi, samedi, don't insist on the E, uh, samedi, samedi, alright? And the last one, dimanche, dimanche, you get the sh, 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 and then A, N, A, A, dimanche, okay? Let's see them one more time. Lundi, mardi, mercredi, jeudi, Vendredi, samedi, dimanche. Normally, in France, we tend to use this le weekend. So if we're talking about the weekend, okay, but then pronounce it the French way. Weekend. Le weekend, okay. But then in uh, other uh, French-speaking uh, countries, they, they tend to use this la fin de semaine. La fin de semaine, okay. But then in most of the cases, if you talk with French people, it will be le weekend. Le weekend. If you want to talk about les mois de l'année, okay, année, year, mois, month, okay, les mois de l'année. So we'll see now the first one, the first one, January, so it looks, well, it looks a bit the same, no, no, wow, uh, no, but anyway, anyway, janvier, so that's the way to pronounce it, janvier, a n o. okay, and then, ye, 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 janvier, then comes, février, février, okay, remember when you have this accent aigu on the top of uh, then you pronounce it a okay there is a lesson regarding this topic so uh don't be afraid and if you're not sure about that well try to practice it février février okay then mars okay so in a way it's an exception because normally final s is not pronounced in french okay we've got some exceptions and this one is one of them so mars pronounce the final s mars mars okay then avril 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 nothing really tricky about this month so i mean for the pronunciation avril okay here be careful because people tend to try to pronounce it to, to pronounce it the, 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 the english way in french remember when you combine this a uh, and then E vowels, you get the sound E, E. So really open E, okay? And then you pronounce it ME, ME. Okay, so don't pronounce E, uh, in, don't try to pronounce it. No, it's ME, ME. So it's not MY, it's ME, okay? And then here, well, it's a bit tricky, but still, EN goes like UN, UN, okay? And then you get JU. Juin, juin, juin. Okay, let's see them one more time. Janvier, février, mars, avril, mai, juin. Okay, second round. Hop, juillet. Okay, you get this double. L here, y -y 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 -y. juillet, juillet. Don't pronounce this final T, E, T here at the end. E, juillet, juillet. So it's July. And then here, two options because, uh, well, two options are acceptable in French. The first one, you don't pronounce the final T. Ou, ou, ou. Second one, you pronounce it. Oot. 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 Alright, so remember, first option, don't pronounce it. O. 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 Second option, you pronounce it. Oot. 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 Okay? 
then well it's it's quite simple normally for an english speaking person so then it's quite close to uh, other uh, languages as well so septembre 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 remember this e m o septembre b, b. you don't insist on the final uh, septembre septembre then same thing here don't insist on the final e octobre 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 novembre 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 okay e m o o novembre novembre and the last one décembre 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 same thing e m o décembre okay so let's repeat them juillet remember this yeah 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 juillet ou first option août second option septembre octobre novembre décembre okay the little gift l'hiver l'hiver and it means winter so i've been putting this m here just to tell you that it's masculine l'hiver le printemps le printemps spring l'été l'été summer so i forgot to put it but here i should put m because it's masculine l'été l'automne l'automne and same thing here it should be m automne masculine l'automne okay so let's repeat it l'hiver le printemps l'été l'automne and then the last thing for this lesson if you want to introduce the the dates okay so if you want to tell what day it is uh, today so aujourd'hui means today aujourd'hui today nous sommes so we use the verb to be okay we are nous sommes le 8 juin 2012 okay so forget for the 2012 don't be afraid we'll see that a bit later for the numbers okay aujourd'hui today nous sommes we are le you put the article definite article okay and then you put the the date here okay you start with the number the month and then the year okay or then second option aujourd'hui so it doesn't change it's here today say it is this is and then you put the date le 8 juin 2012 okay le masculin et le féminin so let's see how we will modify some words that are masculine into a feminine form here because for instance we're talking about well whether professions or occupations here student assistant actor dancer baker and then computer scientist it looks quite quite nice in english informaticien is nice but still in english computer scientist it's 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 very really interesting okay so uh the rule in french is to add a at the end of a word to put the feminine form okay so for instance here we get étudiant and then we get assistant here okay you just take it back here étudiant and then you will add this a uh, at the end without modifying the first part okay so it will of course change a little bit the pronunciation because you will pronounce it at the masculine form il est étudiant okay a n t étudiant okay but then for the feminine form elle est étudiante okay Okay, you don't really insist on the E, uh, but you insist quite much on the T. Elle est étudiante. Il est assistant. So don't pronounce the final T here. But for the feminine form, elle est 
assistante. Ok Étudiant, étudiante, assistant, assistante. All right Then, we've got now the tricky ones. Il est acteur. Ok So it's one of the irregular ones. E -U -R here. Acteur. And it will become RIS. So, E -U -R is becoming RIS. Elle est actrice. So, acteur is becoming actrice. Okay? And then we've got a second group with this E -U -R combination. Il est danseur. E -U -R is becoming EUSE. Danseuse. Okay? Danseur, masculine. Danseuse, feminine form. Il est danseur. Elle est danseuse. Okay? Then we get this group. Like boulanger. Boulanger. E-R. So if you add this final E at the end, then you will have to put this accent here. Accent grave. Remember when you get this E plus this accent grave, you pronounce it like E. Really open E sound. Okay? So boulanger. Boulanger. And then feminine form boulangère. Boulangère. Same thing, don't insist too much on the final E. Boulangère. Okay? Il est boulanger. Elle est boulangère. All right? And the last group is I-E-N. Informaticien. Yen, yen, yen. So that's the way to pronounce this I-E-N. Yen, yen. Okay? Informaticien. All right. And then, if you look carefully, then here, okay, you will have to double the N and then add this final E, uh, okay? And you get the sound informaticienne, sienne. Remember, E uh, and then double N, or then it could be double L or double uh, consonant here. You open your E. Uh, So it's E, informaticienne, okay? So I tend to insist a little bit, okay? Don't worry, I will pronounce it a bit more lovely after. Il est informaticien, elle est informaticienne. Okay, so let's see them one more time. Il est étudiant, elle est étudiante. Il est assistant. Elle est assistante. Il est acteur. Elle est actrice. Il est danseur. Elle est danseuse. Il est boulanger. Elle est boulangère. Il est informaticien. Elle est informaticienne. <rire>